All right, so let's make our first mistake. And the whole purpose of us intentionally making these mistakes is so that we become familiar with how the Java tools report these errors so that then we can recognize them and more quickly fix them. So let's start with a comment. So slash star enter to make our comment block. And the first thing we're going to do is called, we're going to make what's called a compile time error. So this is a compile, compile time error. And what I mean by that, and it's, I think it's a pretty good name, um, this code doesn't even compile. Meaning when we click on the compile button or hit control K or command K, it's not going to work. We're going to get an error from that Java compiler. These types of errors um, are often called syntax errors. And in fact, that's the language you're going to see from the, the Java compiler. So here's our first mistake of the day. Um, often these are simply typos that we make. Like we just miss a character or we mistype something. So let's, let's pretend we did that. So we want to print hello world. We're just going to keep trying to make that thing work. But when I type system.ou, I, I miss the T. So instead of system.out, I have system.ou. And then I have println, hello world. This happens all the time. You mistype a character, you misspell a word, you leave out a letter. Every day. When we try to compile this, and as a reminder, there is the compile button in the upper left corner, or you can just press Control-K or Command-K on the Mac. At the bottom status bar, we're going to be told there are errors found in the class. All right. You'll notice that the lines with errors have a little red mark on the left side. If you either click the link in the lower right, or what I find is easier is just to hit Command or Control K again, you'll be told specifics about each error. And so the error message we get from the Java compiler is that it cannot find a symbol. And then it gives us a little more. It says it can't find the symbol specifically for the variable OU. So the Java compiler is smart enough to figure out that OU should be a variable. But when it says it cannot find symbol, what it means by that is that no one's defined that variable OU. Remember in Java, we have to define all our variables before we use them. Um, we didn't define it, and nor did just the Java standard library define it either. Because there is no variable OU, right? We misspelled it. So when you see this message cannot find symbol, two things you should check. Did I misspell the symbol? Or did I forget to declare the symbol? Um, and we're gonna and, and that's usually one of the two, the two cases. So this is our first compile time error. All right? We're gonna leave this in our code, but we're gonna comment it out so that our code will compile again, but it's still in our notes. And we're gonna generate another error. Okay. This one is going to be a runtime error. So this is a runtime error. And what I mean by that is this code compiles and runs, but it generates what's called an exception. In most cases, especially for now, the program crashes. So we call it a runtime error because the error manifests itself when our program is running. Okay? The Java runtime is what detects the error condition and reports it. And the way it reports it is with what's called an exception. So let's, let's do one on purpose. System.out dot println, one divided by zero. Okay, what's the result of one divided by zero? Well, we're not allowed to divide by zero in Java. Right? But try this. Compile this code, switch to the BlueJ project window, right click on the hello printer class, run the main method, and see what happens. I'll do the same in just a moment. So 
So I'm going to switch to the UJ project window, right click on hello printer, choose the main method, hit OK, and what is displayed is the BlueJ terminal window, but there's this bottom pane now that we hadn't seen before that says java.lang arithmetic exception. Okay? There are many different types of exceptions in Java. We'll see a few of them throughout this semester. We'll study exceptions more next semester, but we're given a little bit of extra information. Not only do we know the type of an exception, but it says, hey, you divided by zero. You can't do that. It's called an exception because it's something that is an exceptional case. Something happened that wasn't expected. Um, it shouldn't have happened. Um, what's really nice about this is that where it says hello printer.main with the underlined part, this is a link. I can click on this and it will take me to that specific line of that specific file, which makes it so much easier to find and fix these types of errors. Okay. Um, so in this case, I could say, okay, well, I guess I can't divide by zero, so I can fix that. Right. And, and just, you know, in general rule of computing, if something's printed in red, something bad happened. Don't ignore it. Look into that. Make it go away. Fix that. All right. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to comment this out so it's in our notes, but we won't have that runtime error anymore. There's another type of runtime error that's a little bit more subtle. So let's create one of those now. So another slash star enter comment block. This is also a runtime error. And again, what I mean by that is this code compiles and runs, but it doesn't produce the expected output. So that's still an error. If our program is supposed to print hello world and it doesn't, there's still an error. Okay. The way we classify this, you know, to, to distinguish it from the runtime exception errors, um, more specifically, this is a logical error. So what I mean by logical error is this isn't an error with our syntax. This isn't an error that generates some exceptional condition. This is an error with our logic, okay? meaning what we told the computer to do and what it did, because it does exactly what we tell it to do, is not what we intended for the computer to do. We have some sort of logical error that we have to fix. Here's an absurdly simple example of this. If we want to print the string hello world, but instead we code system.out.println hello word, that's a logical error. Right? It's supposed, our program is supposed to print hello world, it prints hello word. Right? More egregious examples would be if you wrote banking software and every time you made a deposit, it accidentally did it a withdrawal, right? That would be a problem. You'd have a lot of unhappy customers. That's a logical error.